Good morning, everybody. We'll uh, call the special meeting of City Council from Friday, April 24th to order. Um, today's meeting is a uh, special meeting in order for us to get an update. Last week we had uh, an announcement by the provincial government uh, that had some implications on uh, uh, finance and budget. And uh, as council is uh, in the middle of that now and reviewing the 2020 budget and financial plan and the implications around that, uh, we wanted to call a special meeting this morning in order to give our administration, uh, Blair and uh, Flavia, uh, an opportunity to give us an update on uh, the announcement and some of the implications of that announcement. So I'll turn it over to Blair and Flavia. All right, thank you, Your Worship. And as you stated, since our last meeting, uh, things are changing rapidly uh, as a result of the pandemic, different financial announcements being made uh, by both the federal and provincial governments. So. Uh, what I'd like to do is I will go through since our last meeting some of the changes based on what the government has done and how it may or may not impact certainly coming forward on Monday decisions of council based on different reports that we have from uh, Flavi, our chief financial officer. Um, but first, we have heard from the province, and if it's fine, Your Worship, I'll walk through a list Perfect. of these and then open it up. Um, the government is authorizing municipalities to hold on to the school property tax that we collect on behalf of them until December, uh, which is, uh, you know, it on its face would appear to help municipalities um, at the beginning. What they say, though, is the municipality in doing so must first use that to pay other taxing authorities like regional districts, regional hospital districts, uh, transit authorities, BC assessment, and so on. So. It is as much about helping those others, uh, more so probably than helping us. But that is a benefit that they have put forward, that we don't have to uh, pay that. And as I go through this, you'll see some of the challenges that will come, not just as a result of that, but others. They've also, the one thing we've asked was they have now allowed us to borrow from our capital reserves, from our reserve funds for the operations. Before that was not allowed. Um, they have now said for those that have reserves, uh, you can reach in and use that money. And if you need to borrow from your capital reserves, you will have to pay it back, but over five years. So that is an option for us as well. But you would need a pretty deep capital reserve to meet some of the financial impacts or possible financial impacts that we may see as a result of tax collection going forward. Uh, we can extend our revenue anticipation borrowing for one additional year past the current time limit. Not a huge impact for us uh, in this case, but another uh, opportunity they put out. Municipal uh, property tax sale provisions are amended for this year only, uh, allowing municipalities the discretion to delay the statutory date of property tax sales. So that is our call. That is something we will bring forward for your consideration as well, whether council would like to pursue uh, a tax sale this year or defer it for next year. What it would mean is four years of delinquent taxes prior to the uh, tax redemption year, but we will bring something forward for your consideration there. Um, one of the larger ones that they have done is the, uh, for businesses, class four through eight. Um, and that covers a wide range um, of, from commercial to light industrial to industrial. Uh, they are postponing the late payment penalty until October 1st. So they're encouraging businesses that can to pay by the July 2nd date, uh, but there will be no penalty imposed until October 1st. If you haven't paid by then, there will be a 6% penalty imposed. Um, and then a two and a two to get to the 10, which is uh, the late penalty charge. So all of this, with the other one I will touch on. So those are the <coughs> ones they've announced. The ongoing that they wanted us to make sure the public are aware of for people that are 55 and older, there is a tax deferral program that is available to people. Um, <coughs> criteria around that you need to have a percentage of your home paid for and so on but what it allows is individuals who do not have the ability to pay their taxes but do have equity in their home to actually defer their taxes under this program and, uh, the government then pays those taxes for you when you vacate your home the amount owing whether it's one year two years or however many years you 
utilize that tax deferral, you would then pay it back at that point. It's a great program for people that are somewhat financially strapped, uh, whether it is in this time or other times. People have worked hard all their lives, developed uh, equity in their home, and this is a, a way to help them on that. So, now, laying out the, the new options that the government has presented, can create a significant challenge for us. And I'll just give a brief and then ask Flavia to jump in if I've missed anything. 60% of our tax base comes from classes four through eight. If they so choose to pay early by July 2nd, that's a benefit for us. If because the penalty has been moved now to October 1st, they choose not to pay until then, we will see multiple millions of dollars of challenge for the city of Dawson Creek. What allows us to drive the um, services that we deliver in the city is our tax collection. That's how it works. Um, so we're, we're somewhat watching that. We won't know for sure until July 2nd, and things change daily, so there may be other programs yet to come. But we're gonna follow that. The other option of saying that we have to collect um, our taxes, and whether we collect them or not, what percentage we gain, we still have to pay the regional hospital tax, the regional district requisition, and so on, could put us in a position that, heaven forbid, we may have to borrow money at some point, which would be on the taxpayers of the city of Dawson Creek, to pay other levels of government, which does not make, we've reached out to the government, we think this is an unintended consequence that they possibly maybe didn't recognize. Um, had a good discussion on Thursday. The minister, I raised the question with Minister Robinson. Um, they're going to see if there was anything there. I, I have my doubts on that. But rather than me carry on a great like this has changed since our last meeting. There was uh, a number of our discussions were based around, and we have a report coming for Monday's council meeting that has some options based on it. But Flavia, have I missed anything that you would like to add to the discussion? I no, I think you covered the key issues. So we felt it was important to be prior to Monday's meeting to have this discussion if there was any questions of council that may lend their mind to how they're going to consider the reports that we'll be discussing at Monday's council meeting based on taxation. Thank you. Councillor Dreco. <coughs> so on that, <coughs> when the province waives the penalty or defers it until October 1st, does that apply to municipal tax uh, school tax and hospital tax, all the whole package? Yes, the whole package, yes. Mm -hmm. Everything included. So can we override that then and charge a penalty ourselves? So, sorry, can Go I? Ahead. Yeah, so through your ship, uh, we can't override the October 1st uh, penalty date. It's uh, They are expecting 10% penalty at that time. The only thing that we are doing is suggesting that 6% would be paid as penalty for October 1st and then 2% November and 2% December. We can't override or try to bring a penalty early or uh, change that due date. Councilor Fargo? So this 6, 2 and 2 is a, a made in Dawson Creek? Yes. I didn't gather that until that. <laughs> yeah. That, no, that's... that's uh, <coughs> That's fine. Um, how further question? Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Um, we can borrow from capital reserves. Uh, what? How many? What's the? What's the? How much capital reserve do we have? Well, go ahead. So, at the end of December two thousand nineteen, we had fifteen million. Fifteen million. Uh, uh, we are expecting about six point nine million coming from PRA allocation. But we do have an expectation of 15 million expenses in capital, uh, which includes also equipment pool. So net, the end of the year, we are expecting less than 10 million balance. Which is not, not very much. No. no. I will point out that the work that council has done over the last couple of years is to beginning to rebuild those reserves as well. So I think some good progress has been made. <coughs> ourselves in this unfortunate position that the world is seeing right now that um, may have an impact on those reserves. The um, delay in the recover re receipt of that uh, property taxation cash uh, then and us having to push that as you indicated Blair having to push that 
cash out to the other levels of government, then depending on what uh, we don't receive from commercial, industrial, uh, light industry, heavy industry, utilities and agriculture, depending on what we don't receive from them until October will determine whether we need to borrow or not. And depending on how much we borrow, then we'll determine how much that costs us in borrowing costs. Mm -hmm. Very much. If there was enough within our reserves, we're fine because it would be interest free to ourselves. But we may be in a real possibility that based on, and again we, we can't determine until July 2nd comes and goes, it, we may be in a position where we would have to reach out to borrow some money, which then there's a cost associated with that. And that borrowing cost is borne by the city residents and businesses. So. The major capital program this year that we'll determine on uh, Monday is the 15th Street uh, paving project of about four million or five million dollars. And so we allocate that fixed amount into our capital uh, reserve as a uh, payment that we're going to expect in October, November, or December, whatever completion. Do we have to, I guess, can we use that fund until we pay it? Uh, in terms of offsetting the lack of cash or do we have to hold that that money in a reserve until such just uh, for completion of the project so we can use it uh, the question is that if we're gonna have cash coming in to offset what we use it during the year for that project because then otherwise you still need to borrow right yeah. it's just a timing difference yeah. but the expectation would be I would assume if the penalty for those uh, four five six and seven kick in October, the, then that's going to be an incentive for those people to pay and perhaps that might offset that cash mm -hmm. that we're going to need to pay that capital program at the end of the year. But you don't know. We don't know. That's really the challenge, Your Worship, with the time we're in and it, as quickly as this is changing, the world is changing and decisions from different levels of government. Um, we will get through this. It's a matter of how financially we'll do it. Will it borrowing on behalf of the city, will it allow us to move our reserves around until payments are made, but uh, a lot of unknowns at this point, but uh, not unlike every other municipality in the province. The challenge is that uh, when the government reached out and made this, it was certainly with good intentions to help business, I think, probably not recognizing or reaching out to the, some many rural and smaller communities a good portion of their tax base comes from classes four through eight uh, versus say downtown Vancouver for example. Is that, does that total reserve that we have available to borrow from is that water and sewer utility as well and can we use that as well? Yeah it includes everything under the capital. Okay. Councillor Parzal? So the interesting question for, uh, is relative to our other meeting you know certain recommendations were made um, with the best knowledge at that time, uh, with this announcement, and of course there's some announcements today. Uh, so I wondered if you can talk through the, what, the, the interface between those recommendations and these changes and what, how those recommendations might need to be adjusted, if at all. But I mean, I think uh, all this stuff does in align with some of the discussion we had at the yeah. other meeting. I think probably the one that jumps out right away would be the penalty. Uh, we had waived the penalties until August 1st. Uh, traditionally, if you don't pay your taxes uh, by the 2nd of July, a 10% penalty is imposed. Uh, so as the council had discussed, and you'll see in the reports that are contained for Monday's meeting, they made a determination that we would like to look at the possibility of not implementing penal penalties until August 1st, at which time it would be 2% each month thereafter up until December, which would then reach you to the 10. This changes because although that could continue, it could not continue for classes four through eight, our decision. The provincial government has determined that there will be no penalty until October 1st, at which time then what we're bringing forward is we would then on that day, business classes four through eight would see a six percent and then a two and a two to bring it forward to the ten by the end of December. So that I think would be the most significant uh, alteration and discussion that will have to take place based on what council's thoughts will be on that. Um, and then again we did put in a third option. We looked at options A and B I'll call them 
there was a third option that has come back to us now in the form of a grant if you don't change your mill rates uh, as council has discussed and developed their financial plan uh, if there was no reduction there the possibility is to keep the, the increase pardon me but then offer a grant back and you'll see it's written into the report that it is the same financial side impact as option B but just dealt with a little differently go ahead Yep. So um, this this uh, kicking in of the penalty for uh, four, five, six, and eight uh, and seven um, does not apply uh, for residential. The, the residential people would s still be uh, that proposal that's being put forward from the previous meeting. The two, two, two. Yeah, uh, would apply to the residential. Mm -hmm. At this point, it would, based, and then that will be a discussion of council and uh, depending on other decisions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that uh, was one of the. Um, I think one of the bigger th things that for me that come out was the tax deferral that the uh, province has now implemented for business and commercial. Those other. Um, changes what we had uh, discussed at the previous meetings and now we uh, will move that forward on Monday and make the decision in terms of what do we do with the penalty for commercial starting in October and what we do with residential uh, tax uh, penalty um, moving forward now with this announcement from the government and do we harmonize it with business or do we keep it the same or will council will have to make that decision on Monday and then the implications now of having to move that money out and the cash flow changes the um, changes the amount of revenue we expect to receive in property taxation, which may impact that decision even more so of borrowing um, if uh, we don't see that uh, revenue come in in July, August, and September. So, do you, do you want to? So, sorry, do you want to talk more about this third option? Uh, <coughs> Well, I think I think honestly today I wanted to make sure we got an update, and then Monday more, Monday's meeting the reports are in there for our discussion and council's consideration today. I wanted to really make sure council had the update from the province's announcement on last Thursday or Friday when, uh, when it was made, so that we could be updated on the implications of that and then deal with uh, the reports that have been brought forward for Monday's meeting and the decisions around two or three aspects to it, Blair. Your Worship, also with the options we presented uh, for your consideration on Monday, there was a fear that we were going to take the fair share allocation down uh, from 45% to 30% into capital. After all the work council's done over the last time to try and shift more into the capital, we're able to manage to keep that 45% in capital based on the discussions and the recommendations and the reports that you'll be seeing uh, and have seen now for Monday's meeting which I think is favorable. A lot of work council has done on that in ensuring that the direction of fair share uh, or the PRA is directed towards capital more and more each year until we get to, uh, at this point, 85% was the number. Now, as strategic planning discussions move forward, and um, although we're going through difficult times right now, I think it's fair to say this is probably not a one-year impact. I don't think this may be a multi-year impact that we're going to see uh, not just for our city, but cities and uh, provinces in our country for a number of years to come. The other announcement the province made was the reduction of property taxes, the school taxes for industry business. I just wonder if you could speak to that. So they have reduced them by half uh, for businesses, and then they have increased it another 25%, I believe it was, yes. last year, in order to help offset the impact on business. and. You know, people have asked myself, for example, how come they're not doing it for residents and so on? Uh, they're trying, and the answer is I can't speak for them, but they're saying, look, businesses right now seem to be the hardest hit. They're the ones that are going to help the economic recovery when this starts to turn around. They want the ability for them to be in business still, to create the jobs and have places for people to go back to work. I think that's their real focus. Uh, they've come up with a number of other plans. Uh, for residents, whether it be rental income to serve, the 
uh, individual income assistance for people that have been impacted by this. But um, their first attempt, to, and they continue to say this, so I want to be clear, this is where they're at today. There may be more coming uh, as far as assistance programs or different uh, things that the government does. They are continuing to work on this. So. Good. Councillor Javeckoff? So that <coughs> that tax reduction, that applies to class four to eight? School tax <coughs> reduction? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah the 75%. Yes. So does it reduce the municipal taxes as well? or just hospital and schools? It just reduces just the school tax portion. It does not reduce the hospital or the regional district. They're each separate entities of the body of taxes of which we collect for other, other jurisdictions or levels of government. So it won't reduce the revenue that we get for taxation? No. Uh, not from the school tax portion that we're going to get. This because it is a flow through for us. We collect it and pass the school taxes on to the province. That part won't be impacted. But are the municipal tax, the tax that's paid to the city of Dawson Creek will stay the same? Yeah, apply it's, your determination. Yeah, based on which option we choose, what the yeah. numbers would be. But yes, we set that. We have authority to set that. The difference today of what we're stating from our last meeting is we may not collect all of the taxes we expect to collect July 2nd because of the financial problems. And now also the penalty for business will not kick in until October 1st, which may or may not have an impact on people that can. The government has said if businesses can pay their taxes, July 2nd is still the day they would like them paid. There are some businesses um, that are doing okay. There's the, the ones out there that haven't been impacted uh, as greatly as others. So what they're saying is, if you've managed to, you know, hold your own through this, please pay your taxes by July second. For but across the board, we're going to waive the penalty until October first for businesses. The uh, the announcement they made was purely that area of taxation they're responsible and are accountable for in the school taxes. Didn't affect the RD taxes or hosp regional hospital district or transit or our taxes. So that will reduce the uh, the payment that we have to make to the school for school taxes. Um, I don't know how by how much, but that'll help us. Um, yes. As far as having re enough revenue to pay that ahead of time before we get it, if, if that's the case. Yeah. yeah, that as well as based on what the percentage of payees are to the yeah. city as well. The gap, the gap will be we collect that school tax on behalf of the government. We're, we can hold it till the end of December, but by delaying the interest penalty till October, if 30 or 40 percent of uh, our class four, five, six, and seven don't pay, um, and 60% of our tax revenue comes from them. It's that amount of money that if we if that significantly impacts our cash flow I think what Flavia is saying is and our Blair is saying is we then have to borrow in order to make up that money because we got to give that tax money to the RD and the hospital district and transit and those regional hospital districts. That's the that's the that's the nut. Part of the, and very, very correct, Your Worship, it is the key issue that they've said, although we're waiving your payment until December 30th, you'll collect it. Um, you have, it says, and it's highlighted, you must first pay these other jurisdictions, not help it operate the city of Dawson Creek. So that's, that's the challenge we'll face. Councillor Parzal? Uh, it was mentioned about uh, some people are wondering uh, about relief for the homeowners uh, and their school taxes. Well, the government already uh, takes care of most people's um, school taxes through the, the, the homeowners grant. The homeowners grant covers um, the majority of school taxes people have to, who have to pay them some have to pay a little more of the very high end but uh, I think there's about on average is about two hundred dollars of the homeowners grant left over that can be then you reduce the municipal taxes in, in this community so that's that help is already there so how would they give more help <laughs> 
Well, that's yes. I mean, governments, I think, uh, right around the world, but when we look at Canadian and provincial governments right now, the programs they're coming up with are coming with a significant cost. And you know, how they're going to handle that is uh, within their realm for discussions, is similar to what we're having here this morning and will have for some time coming forward. Our financial position is one that uh, you try and come through a very difficult time this pandemic without jeopardizing the financial future of the city. And that's always the balance that uh, I know that each of you are looking at. And, uh, we'll continue to do that and deliver you the best options that we can. Thank you. Councillor Dweckel. And there's the other issue of uh, with these tax reductions and, and penalty, like waiver, waiving the penalties, a lot of the businesses do not own their own property. No. They rent. And uh, mm -hmm. I've been talking to a few businesses around town. Um, they're not getting relief from the landlords. No. Some of them have asked for relief and they're not getting it. So any, uh, you know, intentions that, that the province has or we have to help businesses does not apply to all businesses. So, you know, that's an issue that, uh, that I think can be fairly significant. Now, I don't know how many businesses actually lease their premises or, or rent, but uh, the ones that do stand to gain nothing. That will be part of the challenges of every level of government when they put the programs forward, whether it's what we're talking about here today or the provincial or federal. There will be unintended consequences that uh, just as you've laid out right there. Uh, There's another uh, issue is some of these businesses are owned by, or some of the properties are owned by public companies. And public companies have all kinds of means to increase their revenue or, or you know increase their uh, cash reserves um, so you know including them is is another issue I mean it's it's basically you know their public companies don't require the money they're the people that support them are the people that are invested in them Further comments? Further discussion? Councillor Parzal? Yeah, just uh, appreciate having this chance to think about this ahead of Monday. So just help me with this. Oh, uh, sorry. You there? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. It's from my apologies, the press room. Um, yeah, I just have a quick question with respect to uh, the province granting municipalities the ability to borrow interest free um, from their capital reserves or also the ability to carry. Uh, short-term debt for another year. Uh, have we? It looks pretty vague. What conditions, if any, have they attached to it? And I'll kind of explain. Um, so currently, unfortunately, we've got uh, seventy something employees that are temporarily laid off. Um, that, depending on how things shake out, uh, may we may be able to bring them back for the end of May. That's our hope. If not, uh, some of those will roll over into permanent layoffs. And there, at that time, they will incur some expenses around severance and other things. Um, what, I mean, it's, does that qualify under operational expenses? Should we have to dip into debt? Um, I mean, I know I'm kind of talking worst case scenario here, but I'm just wondering what constraints are placed on us around, is it just operations in general, or have they added some conditions to that? Because I think the intent is to keep employing people, so if we're <laughs> telling them that we're going to be doing this to, to pay severance because we can't bring people back, is that going to hinder our ability? No. Through, through your worship to uh, No, we have the ability, this would be uh, our ability to utilize that revenue, whether we borrow from capital reserves or have to reach out to borrow money, is for operational purposes. The issue you've raised would be an operational expense uh, for the city of Dawson Creek. Uh, but I do want to reiterate, it's our goal uh, to bring the people back versus having to address, I understand what you're saying, we don't know because of the unknowns, but heaven forbid, should we ever have to uh, uh, go down that path and we have to go past the 13 weeks of which is a temporary layoff time frame, uh, the dollars that we would be allowed to access through our capital reserves and so on 
could be used for such things as you just mentioned. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor yeah. Park. So this just occurred to, to me. Um, so I'm talking about the homeowner's grant. The homeowner's grant um, is applied for when people pay their taxes. So if people defer paying their taxes until later in the year, um, the school tax amount is still, is still required by the province and it's not going to be reduced by that homeowner's grant. So are we not compounding our liabilities here um, by this we, we, we've got going to use the school tax money that we collect to we have to pay the full amount I've heard to hospital da 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 the amount of money that people uh, that we have to collect is the full amount of the school tax but then it's offset to a degree by the homeowners grant that homeowners grant doesn't kick in if people haven't applied for their uh, haven't paid their property taxes is that compounding the cash flow challenge because the maybe. full school tax is required to be paid by December 31st yes yes there is a risk there yeah do you, do you see what I'm no. just occurred to me I mean uh, there may be as the government continues to evaluate options that they're putting out there you know there is they're asking us now that to make sure that we do pay the regional uh, district levy, make sure we pay the hospital. There may be, as communities, we aren't the only community that has raised this issue, there may be an option that they're looking at there and uh, as we said, things seem to change on an ongoing basis and until we're through this, I expect that to continue. So, um, we may have this discussion today, we may make a decision on Monday, uh, whatever council does. The ability for flexibility with council and the financial uh, picture and the budgets. I, I expect there will be amendments to our budget as we go through this uh, because of these times and the changing dynamics of it. Go ahead. Just this yep. is the last. Thank oh, you. Good. Um, so, just a, a, a thought to you guys. Uh, wouldn't, couldn't the province, without any additional cost to themselves, help municipalities? with this cash flow issue if they deducted the value of the home proper homeowners grants from the school tax bill that we must collect i mean they're going to pay this let's suppose in the average citizen in the community under the age of 65 um, the their school taxes are 700 dollars and that would be fully covered by the homeowners grant, but they're not paying their, their they can't pay their property tax. But, so we have got to pay not just the municipal taxes, but the full amount of the school tax. Do, now, the calculation of that homeowners grant they know the number of portfolios the number the um, total amount of this um, home the what are, what's the uh, the homeowners grant why don't they just take it off the table and assume everybody's paid it and thereby lessen the financial liabilities of municipalities mm. you're shaking your head not not doable no, I mean, it's up to the decisions, for your shipping. Well, I'm suggesting we ask them to do that. I yeah, we, we can definitely ask. <laughs> yeah. To raise like the we, issue, we yeah. did ask also, and we haven't received a, a, an answer yet, is about they are expecting we pay fully the requisition amount uh, in August for the region and the hospital, and they are also expecting we will pay fully the school tax by the end of the year independent if we collect or not so our question is can we pay only what we collected because it would not be fair to take from our cash flow uh, s the money from the public to pay for the requisition and school tax that we did not collect it yet we haven't received an answer yet 
And just to, to clarify on that, I think it's an important point. If we collect, traditionally, I think, Flavia, correct me, I think we're in the 97% we collect our taxes by July 2nd. People pay the vast majority. If because of this uh, pandemic and this crisis we find ourselves in today, we collect 60% of the taxes, for instance, as a number, that leaves us 40% down to fund. We still have to pay 100% to these others. It, so we've asked the question, if we collect 60% of the taxes, what if we remit 60% to the regional district, to the regional hospital, and so on? We haven't had an answer. That's what we're talking about now. Their expectation is we pay, but there's a reality that uh, not just Dawson Creek, but many, many communities will just not have the funds to do that. And the province making the um, offer that you can hold that school tax revenue until the end of December, but if you're only collecting 25% of it now, because they've waived it, reduced it for business and industry, and um, they waived the penalty till October 1st, um, that that reduction in school tax money that we're allowed to use to offset it will not be enough for us to pay those other levels of government. Mm, that's a real exactly. And so we got a hot cash flow July, August, September uh, to determine whether we got enough cash to manage our way through or if we have to borrow. And then that's a direct cost to our uh, pro property tax uh, payers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything further? So thank you guys so much for uh, getting this update for us. I know that council were uh, interested in understanding the discussions we've had so far to date in terms of what we're going to do and how we're going to manage the 2020 budget and uh, tax penalties, tax rates, financial plan, capital, all of that. And we have two weeks basically in order to get it done. And so Monday will be a fruitful discussion on uh, giving the community the outline of Council's plan for 2020 for the community. Any other questions for Council? Any comments? Thank you so much, uh, you guys. We appreciate the update and a motion to adjourn. So Councilor Parslow, Councilor Kemp. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you.